What up, guys? Welcome back to Economics and Comics. You know, I don't know how many people are in here. I know there's a couple people waiting, but we got to go. Let's start the show. What up, guys? Welcome back. We got some guests. Exclusive book, Proctor Valley Road. <laughs> uh, there's something about the book uh, with the title that just gets me every time. I don't know. It makes me laugh. But uh, I'm excited for it because it, it is heating up. I heard it was picked up, stuff like that. Lots of news, lots of stuff. So welcome. Time to bring in our guests, Jason from Exchange and Corinne Howell. And Yo, what's up, Time to remove Deadpool. Don't worry, he's leaving. We <laughs> wanted to do that for the beginning. All right, there you go. So welcome. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm excited because Corinne's new to the channel and 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 partially new to me. I know some of her work, um, but it's going to be interesting getting to know a little bit about her stuff and what's going on in her life and all that good stuff. And uh, just be warned, we are the sickos, so we got a lot of crazy sickos in the comments. Can you see the comments, Corinne? Yes, I can. The the public, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. She's she's not new. She's not new to this. She's she knows what's going on. And of course, we got Jason from Exchange Collectibles. You guys, they're launching a new. Let's let's do this. Let me see if uh, it's ready. Let me see here. Yeah. Oh wait. Get all those momos out of here. <laughs> Momo, get out of here. Corinne, it's Corinne Day. So go to exchangecollectibles.com if you guys are interested. And this is the new exclusive cover. Looks like you got a multiple. Okay, well, first of all, you do have options for the Momo. Um, I'm just, I don't even, I don't even want to get in that. So, um, <laughs> but Corinne, this is your cover. Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Okay, you can get the two. What are these limited to, Jason? Um, a thousand for the trade and five hundred for the virgin. Okay, you do have. Okay, we're gonna get real deep here, Corinne. Mm -hmm. She's peeking at us. Oh my gosh, <laughs> she was fun to draw. Oh my gosh, she's spooky. So, did they give you a chance to read the story? Uh, only the pitch packet. Uh, I was only given the character designs in the pitch packet. Uh, other than that, um, can you tell us about the pitch packet a little bit? Like, um, out of curiosity, like they gave me a lot of the other variants, like a lot of covers to see what everybody would has been doing. Um, I did see the Momo cover that one was on there. A lot of the behind the scenes with character designs and how they were uh, developed. Um, a lot of notes about the main story, um, and it kind of just like gave me like a it's like a bit of a Paper Girls vibe, but like in the seventies and. Uh, I kind of like miss stories like that. I miss seventies stories, especially like when it's younger kids. Are they trying to pull off a Stranger Things? Is that that's what I got from the previews? I was like, okay, they're trying to do a Stranger Things. It doesn't seem like Stranger Things. It just seems like um, Scooby Doo Stranger Things. Yeah, kind of like uh, like these girls are kind of like I want to say the little um, underdog, kind of like you know. Outcasts. Yeah, outcasts. I don't want to use. I, it sounds weird saying outcasts because I just keep thinking of the comics now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, I don't get to see. Uh, I mean, it it, it intrigued me because again, I I uh, I've seen a lot of stories in the '80s, but not enough in the '70s. And um, I personally love '70s stories, especially like because I grew up with a lot of movies that my dad had collected, and they were all set in the '70s half the time. Uh, especially a lot of the like older uh, horror movies, like Friday the Thirteenth was like what seventy eight, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and uh, like Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. All the best movies in the world ever. Yeah, all the best movies in the world that uh, that no, I grew up with. No CGI, real, <laughs> just, just fear. It, Especially uh, like ET and Close Encounters, like that was one of my. Those are like one of my favorite. Uh, and Jaws, like one of my favorite seventies movies out there. And I haven't seen. Uh, like I, I still have to go through my dad's giant stack of VHS tapes that he bought when I was a kid. Um, so uh, when I was born, um, they, 
when I was born, they put uh, Jaws. I I think it's the year I was born. I'm not sure. I, I, I think it's 75. I'm an old man, okay? So, but they put like a, a little stuffed Jaws in my crib with me. That was my first. <laughs> <laughs> like I would keep hearing about the story about Jaws being next to me. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, my dad was uh my dad had graduated high school the year Jaws came out. So he got he like I read the book and then I went to see it in theaters and he was like, I didn't like the ending as much. I was like, okay, what does that tell me then? He's like, I think you'll still like the movie though. Okay. But well, um, it, it came back, so you yeah, know. it came back and I, I still love like but I love uh just like the the situation of the 70s, like because we see, again, we see a lot of stories in the 80s now, and um, I want to say that's just kind of been done so many times. Uh, but with the 70s, that's like just going back further to a time where they didn't have a lot of the, you know, you know the 70s and 80s didn't have a lot of technology. Well, that was the best part. Yeah, that's the best part. Um, like, also, not, I don't know how, Corinne, I don't know how old you are. Mike. <laughs> I don't want to ask either, but you know, you maybe you're close to 30. I, don't I know. am 30, actually. I just okay. turned 30. Uh, well, congratulations. <laughs> 10 more years and your life's over, but congratulations. <laughs> you're still doing great. Uh, but yeah, like, does this book hit that feeling of 70s? I yeah, it does. Uh, especially the uh, and one thing I loved about the '70s, also, especially with this book, it was like, oh, they did the costuming right, and like every time I see like new movies now, they try to set themselves in the '70s. I'm like, you're getting the costuming wrong. It's not right. They didn't wear stuff like that. The hair's yeah. not. The hair's not like enough. There's not enough fro to it. There's not the enough. Not like a lot or whatever right. it is. Yeah, like f super poofy. I was super never into that style. Like, I just never. That was like early '80s too, right? Where it was just yeah, it was like hair, faucet hair. Like oh yeah, it was like I, I like straight combed out, like you know, like yeah. the wet, wet. I don't know. I'm talking about my weirdness, so <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> that's what you're gonna get over here. But hey, um, I like weird stuff. So so let, let's ask you what kind of stuff. I mean, for the the people that are watching and they're gonna watch later, um, what type of what what's some work that they would know you from besides um, like dark red and stuff like that. Uh, besides Dark Red, um, I worked, uh, like one of my earlier comics, I worked on um, a short Ben 10. I worked on Bravest Warriors. I worked on uh, Batmite, Transformers Windblade, uh, and uh, the, what was it, the TFCon exclusive for Beast Wars. And then uh, I did like, uh, I did a Ghostbusters Answer the Call run. I worked on Girl in the Bay. I worked uh, with Dark Horse and Burger Books and Clammy Kate. And my current book right now is Shadow Service with Vault Comics. With yeah. My writer, Kevin Scott. We just, we did something for Shadow yeah. Service, didn't we, Jason? So. Yeah, we had the Zoo or Zoo uh, Shadow Service. Nice. Isn't she like, I haven't read too much of it, but isn't she like a female 007 type of thing? Sort of. She's like a private investigator that gets kind of, uh, I want to say, I don't want to spoil too much, but uh, it's she gets uh, kind of picked up by the uh, 007 group MI6. Oh, wait. At the beginning, doesn't she deal with like something supernatural? Yeah, she does. She's basically yeah, I remember that. That was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm having a lot of fun with it because they're like just letting me do whatever I want in terms of gore and horror. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> freedom. It's wonderful. You know, I, do, I do notice a lot from comic book fans, majority, like, uh, I would think, I venture to say, we all love horror. Like, I mean, of course, we all love sci-fi, too, but there's something about the horror that gets us all. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It, if it's, I don't know. It's the fear or the anticipation of something. Like, don't do that. Don't do this. Oh, my God. He's going to kill you. <laughs> you know, but it seems like comic enthusiasts they just love horror stuff so i want to say you don't get to see it as much especially like we don't have ec comics anymore so oh God, yeah so we all have to make up our new our own horror comics and of course now there's no censorship like there was before uh so the just the balls in our court in terms of in terms of horror it does seem like there's a lot you know more for the independent stuff there's a lot more horror and sci-fi for the last couple of years it's they kind of been doing almost the same thing over and over trying to a different way to do it yeah so you find that one thing like you know like something's killing the children or mm -hmm. department of truth i mean i know it's all tinian but 
I'm just saying those little things that, that every once in a while there'll be that one, you know. So I'm hoping the best for Proctor Valley Road in, in regards yeah. to that. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. It's exciting to do the cover. Do you? I mean, how did how did this happen between you two guys to come together to do the cover? Um, well, I actually just oh, <laughs> sorry. It, it, yeah, it was kind of interesting because when we were talking to Morgan over there at Boom Studios everything was moving so fast for this thing. And, you know, the, uh, all of the artwork had to be approved by like a whole bunch of different people and the artists and stuff. So it was basically like, she was like, Hey, we got one spot left and you know, it's, it's Corinne. So I was like, okay, let me check it out. And I looked at it. I was like, yeah, we're, we're good. This is cool. You know, I saw it and it instantly kind of reminded me of, uh, Tales from the Crypt, you know, the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. I was like, oh, this, oh, is, yeah. this is cool. I like this. So, yeah, it was really just kind of, you know, uh, fortuitous, and, and we just got lucky, and it just kind of worked. So it was um, really interesting how it happened. So we were, like, the last person to get an so, exclusive for this book. So, Corinne, are you on a list of approved artists for them? Is that kind of how it worked? I guess so. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I uh, I didn't actually, it, kind of like what uh, Jason says, like everything was moving so fast that um, I just got the email out of nowhere. Like, hey, you want to do a cover? I'm like, sure. And then I came out like, oh, this is, oh, we're doing, oh, there's like um, a lot of these. Okay. So it's a great um, email to get though. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it was really cool. I had a lot of fun with this cover. It was a lot of fun to uh, kind of do, uh, God, it just felt like just this old Scooby Doo tale, but. It's that's exact. Thing. When I read the preview, that's exactly what I thought. Like, yeah, that's, I was thinking uh, I Stranger it. Things meets Scooby Doo kid, you know, like the Scooby Doo team or something. So, uh, of course, I have to read the whole thing. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I can't, you know, I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm hoping it's great for everybody, but like, you know, we'll see how the tale goes, you know. Um, but oh, what was I going to say? So, when, when they do you when you work for someone in particular, like a certain company, like, are you kind of tied to them or is it kind of, are there like these contracts where you can't work for other people? Does it depend or is it certain situations or? Um, that really only applies to the major companies like DC or Marvel. I want to yeah. say, uh, but in other terms, uh, I have not heard that. Uh, I kind of, like they pick you up for a cover and if you want to keep doing the cover, sure, but you're welcome to do whatever else you want. When you were doing Batmite, were you bound to them? No, I was not. Cause I was also working uh, with transform, uh, developing the transformers book. Uh, IDW? At the same time. Yeah. With IDW. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. I used to always like to ask questions. I don't have answers to. <laughs> <And you do. laughs> I don't, I don't want to put you in any weird position. So, okay. um, so yeah, guys, first of all, let's talk about the cover for, for a second. You can get it at exchangecollectibles.com. Of course, you can use code econ, get 10% off, or you can use econ5, it gets 5% off. Yeah, uh, but uh, so we have the $14.99 for the trade. What's that? $1,000 or $500? Uh, $1,000. And then the Virgin's $500? 500 yep and then you can get the two book set also and then the two book it's set it's right here you can get it for 34.99 yep and then oh what's this you have a four book set yep which comes with let's take a look both the both the exclusives from corinne yep. then you have the uh the would that be one considered per one per ten and then the momo Okay. Yeah, that Minotaur is an interesting character too. Oh, dude, yeah. I love. I mean, I really, I really like that cover. Yeah, um, it was a really good cover. Um, I, the one per store I think is a Virgin. Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, and then you can get a slab option, fifty nine ninety nine, and forty four ninety nine for the trade, and those are guaranteed nine eights. Yep. Are you guys? Doing anything in regard to signings or anything? I know it's kind of difficult to work out, but I didn't. I would just. Yeah, I want to ask. Still, with with this CGC facilitator stuff, they're still requiring that that we have a witness on site. They're just getting really crazy. So it would have been like we could have just mailed books to Corinne and she could have signed them and mail them back to us, and we could submit them for yellow labels. 
But now CGC is getting crazy. They want to have two weeks notice, and then you have to have like a public signing. Then we have to have, you know, a witness, you know, over there. It's just like, I don't know why they're trying to make it so difficult. <laughs> Um, it's like how, you do, how are you supposed to get it all done then? Like, yeah, how are you supposed to do that and have it be any way reasonable for the collector? Well, you know? I think, you know, and not to dive too far into this, but like, I think that CGC thinks like we're the best, so we don't have to, you have to bend over for us. I think that's the type of the, you know, whereas, you know, CBCS, you could send in and they'll verify it for you, you know, or something yeah. like that. They say, look, if you want the best, that type of mentality, you have to do what we want you to do. You know what I mean? So I, I get that feel from that situation, especially in the pandemic, where, <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to come fly and sign. I don't think not everyone would want to do that. Yeah, well, plus, then you got to, you have to submit it, right? Two weeks, minimum two weeks before the signing. So CGC can approve it. Now, like, the, the signing is approved. And then we can fly out there, and then CGC wants to advertise it so other people can get stuff signed too. Um, it just gets crazy. And then, but I think that CGC is just like, hey, we're we're having all these in-house signings, so why make it easier for everyone else? We'll just corner the market on the yellow labels. So it's it's kind of crazy. Hmm. Well, when that when the when conventions start again, that it'll I'll get back. That, then it'll I it'll probably come back soon. Yeah. Don't you miss it? It's the biggest thing. Like I'm not an artist or anything, but it's like my favorite thing in the world to go in a convention. Like, it's so much fun. I just miss seeing people. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. Yeah, at least happy people. I go outside right now and see people who are not many of them are very happy. They're just like, damn, damn mask. Mm -hmm. I have to wear this mask. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you get the so many good videos about that too. And then the non-maskers like. This is a this is a pee to my rice. <laughs> yeah, I'm not cool. You get a cool mask, dude. Get something. It's they have a skull cool. mask. They have beast mask. There's a xenomorph mask that you can get. Oh, that's dope. They have masks that when you talk, it like moves. Like Ugh, it, it has, those so, creep me out. <laughs> not the one that goes inside your mouth; it looks like a puppet. But the one that has like electronic lights. Oh, that's so when weird. you talk. Yeah, it, I've seen those. I I I want one of those. <laughs> I, want the, uh, I have this. I have a mask that has the uh, the the devil's horns on it. So every time I walk around in public, people give me weird looks, and I'm like, sorry. <laughs> what do you mean? Like it has a you... pentagram on it. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Scaring everyone, huh? I know. I'm just like, yeah, that means I don't have to wait for anybody to get out of my way. Do you really rock that? Like, when you go to church with that? No, I'm just <laughs> church? What's church? Uh, yeah, right. Um, you're right. I don't remember church in quite some time. But uh, anyway, well, I'm super excited for you guys. Um, we do have a. Okay, so Jason, fill me out on the giveaways. Okay, so first of yeah. all, okay, we have so a giveaway for this video. Tell them what to do. Is going to be this one here, House of X number one, Shannon Mayer. And uh, when the, the video goes live, guys, then make sure to throw a comment on, and you'll be entered to win this. Yeah, comment then, in the comment section, not the live section. Yep, comment when the video goes live. So just go back later today and throw a comment real quick. Um, and then this one, we were this was the giveaway from the Esteban Salinas. We accidentally thought we were giving it away on a different video, so we ended up giving away another last Ronin for that video. So that video got two prizes. Okay, um, so hang on. So, so before we get on to all, let's do this one first. What okay. video do I need to look up? For for this one? Yeah, for the one that, the, yeah, whatever. So I can't this see one right. is uh, the Esteban Salinas uh, so what, with the Dead End Kids. That's where we were giving this one away. Dead end kids. Yep. And then the wind set. Oh, well, hang on. We'll do that one at a time. Oh, I see the dead end kid. Let me copy this. So if you don't mind, Krim, we're going to do a couple giveaways real quick. Okay. <laughs> um, so where are you at, Corinne? Where do, where do you? I am in you? Austin, Texas. Ah, oh my gosh. Oh, that's a great topic. Now, is that the one location that gets all the power, or is that the one? Which no, is the uh, San Antonio? Was it El Paso or San Antonio? I'm trying to remember which one. There, I want to say it was San Antonio that got all the power. 
Um, Austin got rolling blackouts, uh, and, and like a couple of my friends here, like Collie Hammer, Donnie Cates, uh, Becky Clunan, and like a couple people I know that live here. Um, they all like I think Donnie didn't have any power for like a day. I think uh, Collie didn't have any power. Luckily, I did, but we had to end up boiling our water <laughs> for like a whole week. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was like a day, a one magical day of snow, and then everything stopped after that. <laughs> your your yeah. infrastructure wasn't set up for it, apparently. Yeah, just no, it was like we were like we were lucky that Austin's water is not with is like with the city of Austin, and like the electricity is also with the city of Austin, so we're not dependent on like ERCOT or any of those companies. But it was just like nobody was prepared for this at all, and it sucked. <laughs> And our cars were stuck in the snow. We couldn't drive anywhere because nobody knows how to drive in the snow in this state. <laughs> all right. That's, well, that's let me what do. happens in Vegas when we get snow, too. I remember like 10 years ago, we got a foot of snow <laughs> and it was a disaster. People, you know, didn't know how to drive. They didn't know like, hey, take the traction control off your car so you can actually move the thing. You know, uh, it was it was crazy. I used to live in Savannah, Georgia, and I was there when it snowed uh, like a couple of years ago. and you're talking about like a bunch of Southerners that like they live in this old town with cobblestone and uh, like on the road. So it's like, nobody knows how to walk on this stuff. It's like, I've seen like people just like slide on the cobblestone. They didn't know what to do. Oh yeah. It's super slippery. And then there's a, in like in Savannah, we have what they, what they call the stairs of death, which is like the most inclined stairs you've ever seen in your life. Uh -huh. Historic. And they've uh -huh. been there for like, years and when somebody was like when the stairs of death become the actual stairs <laughs> of death and it's everything's frozen over the police are blocking off river street you can't get anywhere else it was bad so it's like oh i went from one place where nobody knows how to drive in the snow to another place where nobody knows how to drive in the snow it's great <laughs> no craig we're not doing that craig i can't everyone wants to i gotta talk to my subs about this in a little bit later <laughs> Hey, everyone wants oh, to donate. I'm trying to send you a million things for the giveaway. Well, like my subs are, and and like they're trying to put together like money and stuff, and I want to help them. I mean, they've reached out, but I want it to be the other way around. Like I want artists and writers and all that that contribute to give to them. I don't want them to have to give anything this time. So, uh, anyway, let's real quick because I have more question for you, Karim. But let's um let's do this raffle. So this one was the Esteban one, and what's the prize, Jason? Yep. It's uh, this metal cover, Tyndall, Phoenix. Okay. okay. Here we go. The winner is William Wilson. What you can do, uh, Jason, write down William yep. Wilson, then go to my Esteban video and reply to him. Yeah. William Wilson. Got it? Yep. Okay, so William Wilson chilling in his lazy boy, dude. <laughs> he's like, yeah, buddy, I just won. Yippee. I wonder what he's drinking. <laughs> beer pong, beer pong. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Now, the other one, what was the other video? Other one was Jimbo Salgado. Okay. Savage. And then that one gets the wind set. Okay, well, hang on. Let me, let me. Load it. So you were saying your friend. Oh shit. This is the Leaf Mills Reebok Nano. We don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so you were saying ass. you were saying that uh, your friends and um they all live near you. Like you guys hang out or what? You, Donnie, Kate, um, Bon, Collie, or what, what is the deal there? Well, it's like, I actually just moved to Austin last year, last March, mm -hmm. actually. Um, we had planned to, like, hang out with each other, and then COVID hit. <laughs> like a whole artist-writer type of deal? Yeah, it was just like, uh, uh, yeah, because, like, Donnie was talking to me about um, doing this, like, big drawing group thing down in downtown Austin or so, uh, somewhere around, and uh, we just haven't had a chance to because of COVID, and we're all trying to be careful. Uh, but we're all like texting each other or keeping up with each other via social media, uh, the kind of keep in touch and, you know, still being stuck in a cave. Ducks. 
I know it does suck, but we're almost there. Almost there. We're so close. Get the vaccines. I, you know, I what I'm really hoping for is like <laughs> we all get our vaccine. We just have a giant naked orgy, <laughs> like all, uh. over, all <laughs> over Earth, to get some new crazy disease. It'd be great. I just need to give that South Park episode <laughs> where they took our germs. <laughs> <laughs> it took our germs. Is that? I don't know why that voice came out. I'm not sure if that was it's even. The, it's the voice that they literally use. <laughs> they took our germs. <laughs> I haven't watched uh, South Park in the longest time, but damn it, that is the funniest one. The, it's so funny. It's so. Oh, it'll it's always so be funny. funny. Okay, let's do this one. This one is for what, Jason? Uh, the wind set. So Someone's gonna win the win. Yep. Nice. Okay, here we go. Press the button. Preston. Preston Eskridge. He's probably watching right now. Preston Eskridge. He says I'm hurting his pocketbook, it, pocketbook and he loves it. <laughs> you got it? Preston Eskridge. Yep. No picture of him on the couch, which is sad. Do we have any other? Just do. Is there any others giveaways? No other giveaways, but we're still okay. I'm removing. We, we still got a couple other people that we got to reach out to. But I remember you thought you maybe had some of their contact information. So, oh, wait, what? Who won? Preston won. Uh, well, Preston just won. But then we got Scott Hunter from the Mother uh, and Black Apart video, which I thought you said you might have his contact information or Aaron R. I think you said you had Aaron R. Yeah, I have. I have Aaron R. And who else? Sorry, Scott Hunter. Scott Hunter for this one. Nope. Okay. I but think I do, that I do have Preston. Okay, so send me, or you can send me Preston too. Yeah. All right, we'll do that. Later. I was trying to figure this one out. This was from the Machine Girl video, the Thor. That's me. <laughs> this one goes to Bill. Okay, we'll go. There you go. Thor six <laughs> one of fifty. Is it Thor six? Yeah. So this one, I, I have written down the Machine Girl Volume Two video. I don't know if that's where we gave it away or if that was the video where we announced it. So. Are you saying we didn't? Is there a name? I don't know. There's no name on it, so we got to figure that one out. Maybe we'll do that later, because that'll probably take too much time. Yeah, we need more time for Karen. She's looking at her. She's bored. <laughs> she's doing this. Nice. Looking at my page, <laughs> just like I'm going, like, oh, I need to fix that. How about we take some questions from the chat? Anybody interested in asking some interesting questions <laughs> uh, for Corinne? Uh, please keep it pot. You know, we usually when we have uh, females on, they get a little crazy. You know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how I, it is. I'm friends with a bunch of dudes. So. Oh, so you know how it is. I, I I listen to last podcast on the left and watch horror movies all the time. I am not. <laughs> I predict what the first question is. What's your favorite horror movie? So if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask. Let's see what they have to say. It might take a couple seconds. I'm just trying to yeah. think what my favorite horror movie is now. I have like a few. Or maybe we can pull up some of her stuff on uh, Instagram, show off some of her other art or something like that too. Okay. While they're coming up with some uh, questions. <laughs> Milestone says Corinne's a total bro. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me pull up your Insta. Are, are you doing it? Is someone else? Am I doing it? Okay, I'm doing it. You're doing it. Now, I was looking. I wasn't sure, but did they misspell your name on uh, Dark Red? On They did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting a call from my editor going, we're so sorry. <laughs> so did they reprint it or what? Yeah, they had to reprint it. Uh, so it's actually it an error cover. Yeah, there's an error cover out there, or a couple, I think. Um, I'm sure I have it, because if it was first print, I have it. That's I awesome. Need I need to get you to. Should I go to your Facebook or your Instagram? What's best? I would say Instagram. I barely go on Facebook because uh, Facebook's become like a weird cesspool recently. But. If I get to your uh, your your 
uh, book signed? Will you sign it, pal, for me? Sure. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, of course. Do you cosplay at conventions? Never have, actually. But I have been asked several times when I was actually tabling, hey, are you cosplaying? I'm like, nah. Yeah, I, I keep getting it a lot though. I just kind of get used to it after a while. You sitting there, they think you're cosplaying. Or like if I'm walking around, because like I tend like the most of the time when I go to conventions, I'm wearing all black all the time. So everybody thinks I'm cosplaying as Black Widow. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And then the one time I'm actually dressed up as Black Widow is for Halloween. And they're like, oh, hey, I like your outfit. I'm like, that's my Halloween yeah. costume. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, do you ever draw buzzed? Buzzed? Oh, God. I think I have a few times. I don't remember the last. Oh, wait. No. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I drew my own version of a magical curl, and I think it's on Instagram. I don't remember. Um, and uh, it was like a picture of like this magical girl ripping over, open her head and like a bunch of snakes coming out. And I was like kind of drunk when I drew that because everybody was doing the Sailor Moon thing. And I was like, fuck it. <laughs> Horror. I don't care. I don't know if this, but yeah, that's sweet. Freddie or Jason? Oh, Freddie, all the way. I, I love. I love. I grew up with Freddy Krueger, and I watched all the movies. Yeah, Freddy. so many times in middle school. Freddie is my <laughs> Freddy Krueger is my man. It's a tough call, but it is. It's, at the same time, it's just his his humor and. He's so much fun. You know, number the the first one, that's a scary damn movie. It is. Like, like not anymore, but, you know, when we were watching it, well, when I was watching even when I, you were just a little kid. When I was watching it, I was older. I was, <laughs> I was uh, when, when I first saw it, I think I was 11 years old, and my dad had all the VHS tapes, so it's just like this stack of Freddy Krueger movies. Mm -hmm. I watched the first one by myself in the dark, it just went, oh, this guy's awesome. That's awesome. I think the only part that really freaked me out was when she was getting killed up on the ceiling. After that, I just thought it was pretty sweet. Was it Johnny Depp or was it a chick? It was the girl. It was the first girl to get killed. Her friend. Was Johnny like, Depp's first movie. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize that for the longest time. And I was like, wait, that's a baby Johnny Depp in there. <laughs> oh, no, he turned into soup. Oh. <laughs> they, they, that's what's so good about those movies is that it's. They're it's they're making it's not fake it's all it's all like why it looks so effects. cool it's awesome uh, which artwork has inspired you which artwork has most inspired you uh let's see I have uh I've really looked into Bernie Wrightson a lot um what's this <laughs> my workout video my workout pictures <laughs> um. Uh, definitely Bernie Wrightson. Um, I'm fr uh, I, I was a big fan of Sean Murphy before I was accepted into his apprenticeship. And um, his artwork was also an inspiration for me as well. Becky Cloonan. Um, oh, God. So Bruce Tim, definitely. Oh, God, yeah. I, uh, it, they have the Batman the Animated Series on HBO Max and also Justice League and Batman Beyond. So I've been watching Batman and Justice League, like, on and off for the past couple days. <laughs> Look, your cosplay. Oh uh, yeah, that was Halloween. I was the vampire nurse. <laughs> yep, the vampire nurse. This is a great way to hide my face. <laughs> I gotta go quick. Every time I do this, it, it, it I, the video gets freaking. <sighs> Whenever there's a boobage. Mm. Mm. So many boobs. It's so stupid. Oh shit! Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be taken there down. Go. Demonetized. It happens so fast too. It's crazy. Like, like they're like up me watching. They're like just. You really love the horror. This is your. This is your area. Yeah, I, I love it a lot. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there's my little cat. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm, I finished it. I actually made. I'm gonna be making stickers of that one. I can't wait. I need a. I'm, I found a good company. I'm just like. I'm waiting for a good time to start printing. So is it just for fun, or do you practice Satanism? Um, I've just been kind of uh, studying it a bit. 
Um, same thing with paganism and uh, Wicca and stuff like that. Uh, kind of just because I grew up Catholic and I went to a Catholic school for 12 years of my life. And so. So uh, you're more on the complete opposite. Yeah. I, I like, but it, yeah, like even as a kid, I was kind of like, why are we going to church? I don't want to go to church. Blah, 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 so that sort of thing. And, and then as I got older, I just started realizing like, I don't feel comfortable in this sort of setting. So I, after I got out of high school, I started looking into all these other things. And then as soon as I left home uh, to go to college, I immediately started looking at other things. Uh, and then lately it's just been kind of me studying things out of curiosity. <laughs> so you're casting spells and doing all this crazy shit at your house. Not yet. See what I, COVID I does. My altar. <laughs> COVID will turn you into a witch. 100 percent i dated a girl that was uh well actually i've dated a couple witches to be honest with you i don't know what it is but they cast a spell on me but well i've done things like i know it sounds crazy but it doesn't sound crazy to me but like bindings and stuff like that that shit works dude it's sketchy it's like, all the power of chaos and uh Positive affirmations. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, but, yeah, but it just doesn't. Uh, yeah, you keep repeating. Uh, God, I don't want to get it. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to fuck with something that you don't want to fuck with. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know how powerful this shit was, but it's a real deal. It's like every time I see a movie about witchcraft, I'm like, you don't fuck with the thing. You're not supposed. And they're dead. And bye. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, those are movies. It's just uh, more. Anyway, I think we went too far already. <laughs> Boobies and Satanism. <laughs> I think we, yeah. we did it. We did, we did it. Fail, you know? We did it again. Um, get canceled. No, we're not. <laughs> so um, there goes IDW for you. Uh, <laughs> IDW gone. Disney gone. You know. <laughs> uh, I work with Disney briefly. They they're not. That's that's a joke. Don't worry. It's all about indies now. Anyway. Uh, um, the more crazy you can get, the better. Oh yeah. So yeah, anything else coming up for you in the future? Because we're gonna we're getting close here to end in the show. Um, um, not that I know of. I know that I have a pitch that's going. I'm just still waiting for if it's going to get approved or not. Um, I have two more issues left. I'm working on issue eight right now with Shadow Service, and we have two more issues left of that. Um. And I don't know. I, I haven't really gotten anything yet, so that might change, of course, in the future. So we'll see. Well, you always got some options here with Jason. I'm sure he'll be looking back at you. For <laughs> so that's always good. And oh, uh, let's. What's your prices on commissions, Robert O'Brien? Would like to know. Um, when, uh, my commissions, uh, I only do traditional. I do not do digital anymore, mainly because I kept getting really weird ones. And, um, well, that's nothing new for an artist. It's like, I'm just, I just can't do it, man. I don't want to know about your weird finish. Tentacle penetrating. The feet <laughs> finish one was weird. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Um, well, can you tell us about it? It was just like somebody wanted a superhero character with no shoes on. And, and then I That's started it? realizing, like, I was like, okay. And apparently some other artists also got the same thing. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I know. Okay, but I, I thought it would go way farther than that. You're just saying. Uh, I will. I think it's, you know, some artists go farther. I keep the brakes on when it comes to that stuff because I don't really want to go any farther than that. We're taking uh, off shoes. Yeah. I, I just, like, you're getting her with no shoes on. That's it. Um, uh, but, uh, my prices start from a hundred. They go to from a hundred to three hundred. Uh, seven by ten is my smallest piece I can do for a hundred dollars. Um, nine by twelve is two hundred. Eleven by seventeen is three. And and each size is a full piece, like full. Yeah, body. pretty much. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I was thinking like headshot. The, the but you're saying the diff It's all about size. So. Yeah, because uh, I, I tend to get really detailed with some of my stuff. Uh, I don't mean to, but then I then it just it just sort of happens. <laughs> well, that's good. I think that's the thing with other artists. They, they can't. It's like, I don't think I know an artist that knows when to stop. Like, yeah. I, everything I've I've been doing this a long time. 
before the channel, I've been going to conventions for 10 plus years. And I just, every time it's, oh yeah, are you almost done? Yeah. <laughs> you almost done? Yeah. Oh wait. And then, oh, that's like, oh wait, I need to fix this. Or then when we're doing, when we're getting commissions done, it's always like, oh, let me have this little, what, and you got to be able to tell the artist, stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> just Because you guys are your biggest critics. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I did a ghostwriter uh, one a couple of weeks ago or like a month ago. And it was like, I had to redraw that one like three times. because <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I don't like how it looks. Oh, God. Just me like redrawing it and then finally getting out the door. I felt kind of bad. I'm like, I'm sorry. This took so long. <laughs> Do you ever have a piece that you're like, man, that was good. Um, like a commission piece or an original piece? Yeah, any it doesn't matter. It's just <laughs> something where you can go, yeah, I killed that. My uh, one of my recent originals, I've called it uh, Rage um, or Anxiety. I think I'm trying to remember which one. Um, but it was what I called it. It's part of my emotional series, um, kind of inspired by my issues with that I have, which is OCD. I suffer from OCD. So it's kind of like been a rough patch here and there. So I used art to kind of cope with it. And so, uh, the I, one wish I, I had that outlet. Yeah. <laughs> the one I didn't expect, um, to get as insane as it did was this particular piece. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it is. And, um, but it is basically this image of a girl on her knees, and there is um, if yeah. there is there boobage, some tiny bit nibbling, um, but you can like you can just kind of go from here up. But it's uh, it's oh, called. Can you me. show it to us, like I without can, showing boobage? Uh, sort of. It's that one. All right, ready? Here we go. Ready, girl. Oh yeah, I saw that. I I I saw that when I was looking at your stuff earlier. That thing is fire. That one, that one's one of my best ones, I think, so far. Uh, but it's called Rage, and it's like the best way. I was like, I felt so angry over the stupid crap that's been happening. How can I make myself feel better? Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it kind of just grew from there. That's really cool. I, 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 I don't know any. I, again, like every artist I talk to, most of them can't even say. Like even if it's the most amazing piece, they're not comfortable with it. Like I, uh, <laughs> it's like I would say like I nailed this one, but you know the inner part of me is just like oh crap, I should have fixed that there. <laughs> See, uh, it's there. It's like oh, wait, you're gonna look like oh yeah, no, no, I missed that. Oh no, yeah, I know. But, but well, I think it's interesting. I, I just I like to. This kind of kind of happens every time every interview we do. Like I kind of go back to that. It always comes back to something like that. Like the. You know, I I don't know. I can't. I don't want to like try to figure yeah. out. Well, I remember. I mean, it's just classic when you were talking to Prio, and he's like, you know, I just hope someday I can make it. And I'm like, dude. You know, yeah, Lucio you know, Prio's like, oh, one day like, I hope to make it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, your art's all over the world. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You're like one of the best artists in the world. <laughs> oh uh, no, he. But his idea. That's the thing. The funny thing was. His idea is he just wanted to do like uh, uh, his own like series, like a story, like an animated or something like that. That was like his dream. But he didn't realize he's like a master artist and like his stuff's everywhere. I just saw a post by Carla Cohen that she just launched. She's doing Red Sonia and all that now. She's oh, like, nice. so she's super. It's been a top secret thing forever, but she just dropped her like first cover. So, you know, you got both of those two living together, pumping out Red Sonia and Vampiro. It's going to be insane. <laughs> but it's so funny. Like, that's this thing. Like, everyone's mindset's different depending on where they're at. You know what I mean? And and eventually, maybe you'll like something you like you did. But I like that piece that you showed. I think it's great. So I'm really excited for you. You guys, please check out uh, this exclusive by Corinne at Exchange Collectibles. Um, and... Fingers crossed this book's a super hit. Now, didn't you say it was picked up? Yeah. So the crazy thing is it was developed with like, I think, um, who, you, uh, like an arm of Universal Studios. So it was kind of already being quasi-optioned as it was developed. Um, okay. So yeah, they're already working on a TV show for it. So 
Sweet. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, it'd be awesome to, to see it kind of go that direction. And I had also heard from someone else that they were saying it's like it's like based off of I, I wouldn't say true story, but maybe like true urban legends or or something like that. So it's got like an element of of truth to it too. Ooh, or, like skinwalkers uh, or skin changers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, who knows? Sweet. Something something crazy going on. So um yeah, hopefully hopefully we can see this thing on Netflix or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we need more stuff because COVID's kind of like killing us in terms of like binge watching <laughs> yeah they need to get more stuff out of that there's this a uh, new uh a new movie it looks good on netflix coming soon it's like army of the dead or, or uh, oh it's a uh, uh uh the Zack snyder yes movie, movie uh kind of like his follow-up to to Dawn oh, of the dead. Dead. I'm excited, dude, about that. Big time. There's, uh, I started watching this show called Thirty Coins on HBO Max, and it's a it's a Spaniard. Uh, Is it good? Yeah, I thought it was really good. They use actual practical effects for a lot of their creatures, and it was surprising. By the first episode, I was like, "Whoa, that took a turn, and that's awesome! Give me more! Give me more! Give me more!" Well, I'm gonna give it a chance now because I keep seeing it on the guy. I don't have a lot of time, but when I do get out there to flip around. It's like all over the place. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm trying to, what is this? So now I'm going to watch it. So awesome. I got to ask a question. Okay. So Craig 69. Okay. He's the ultimate sicko. I skipped over his question on purpose because he asked it every single interview. So here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> Finish off this. Flat, uh, unladen swallow. Huh. It's a test is what it's it a is. Test. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not right. great at science or at math. <laughs> hey, Jason, do you know what this is from? No, I don't think I've seen that one before. It's from uh the what's the movie, Craig? Uh, why well, I can't remember. Oh, God damn! Now my uh, it's a Monty Python movie where the you have to like cross the bridge and all that. Oh, is it Monty Python and the Search for Holy Grail? Yes. Okay. I think so. Okay. Now I was like, wait, why does that sound? So he, he's upset. Hey. But, I was a kid, <laughs> but you know, he's threatening me because I didn't ask the question. He said he's going to, he's tempted to request a Godzilla meets my dog, Chloe commission. <laughs> he's caught because I didn't ask his question. I skipped, I could tell I skipped over it on purpose. And, you know, he knew. <laughs> And he's he's gonna commission you to get a Godzilla to kill my dog. That's not very nice. Oh. That's not very very nice, Craig. Okay. So anyway, I did ask a question for him. Okay. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Thank you for having. I know, Corinne, you're probably like, thank God I could do something instead. Of, <laughs> thank you for having me on. I was sitting in a house, you know, you know, doing uh, rituals. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't altar yet. <laughs> I need ma I'm making my altar. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you do, don't put a spell on me because all that shit works against me. Like, I've like done like Ouija is the most dangerous thing on the planet. Trust me, it's affected my life. Don't mess around with it, Corinne. I'm telling yeah, you right don't now. Don't fuck with things you're not supposed to. But well, the thing about the Ouija board is that you're supposed to say goodbye at you're the end. You're supposed to close the board. All that. You know, I'm gonna close it out. We're not going anywhere. That's I'm how gonna, you do it. <laughs> we're gonna talk about this right now. I talked to the same – so the girl that I was telling you that I dated was a witch. She's not no longer with us, right? But she, you know, her, her and her sister were like Persian okay. like Persian witches. Like, I mean, like – and we did a Ouija board together, right? And, dude, I'm telling you, a friend that I knew died, right? And he came through, and he was – I freaked out and left the board. And he was Ooh. saying stuff – that only I knew through them through the board. They had no idea, right? So we closed the board and all that, and I had a real bad experience, right? Because eventually we did all the thing. Talked to Jim Morrison, talked to you know the whole classic stuff. Apparently Morrison always comes to those damn boards, and then you're talking to like an evil spirit and all this other shit, and you got to close the board. So later, like a couple years later, I'm at this party, right? And there's like 20 people playing it. No, <laughs> right? no. <laughs> I didn't know how to do it, right? And I knew how to like open, close, all that shit. And I'm like, I don't want to play it, don't play it, whatever. I'm in the other room. I said, whatever you do, don't say my name, please don't. I don't want to, you know what I mean? So they're doing it, they're going, nothing's happening, right? Nothing. And they're like, Do you want to talk to this person? You want to talk to that person? And I'm not even there. 
and this is no bullshit, and everyone's gonna believe not believe her, but like, and they're like, Do you want to talk to Billy? Right? <laughs> thing, they all you hear this scream of all these people. It flew off the board, of course, right? That's whole, awesome. No, it's not. Because <laughs> I got demons coming after me. But like she had passed, and then I think maybe she was coming through. I don't know. But it's just you need a cleansing spell, dude. You need to cleanse yourself a sage. So I did okay. So this is even funny. Look, believe me, if there's a male witch, it's me. Like I've <laughs> like uh, yeah, I, I put curses on everyone when I get off. I cursed all the other YouTube channels. I, my grandma was full Sicilian. She could put a curse on anybody. Dude. So anyway, that's a whole nother witchcraft. So, but like one time, like a couple years ago, right after Stan Lee died, right? Oh. <laughs> I was in here. and Not like I have I met him, but there was like this ghost. I don't know how many of my subs remember this, but there was like this thing that was flying around in the camera, right? And it would like touch me and then take off and someone mentioned it right and so i went back and i'm rewinding and it, it, i clearly it was not dust and i felt really weird in this room so i went to this witch store well not a witch store but wicca or you know and uh <laughs> someone else called me mephisto the other day i don't know what's going on <laughs> but uh i got a sage right big old that's that smells really good and you light it and you go through and you like go from one doorway and you kind of go through the whole house and clear it out the other way and uh, out the other, you know, wrap around and go out that end of this and clear it. And um, anyway, Oh, here's the answer to your slow hollow thing. Oh yeah. So they asked the question, what's the latent speed of a whatever swallow? And then the guy goes, African African European. European. and then the guy goes, Oh, I don't know. And that kills the guy. He gets shoots off. <laughs> Now you know if everyone, yeah. But uh, yeah, I cleansed the house, and I tell you what, it did feel nicer in here. But I, most likely, it was dust. But <laughs> keep telling yourself that. Yeah, I, I have it somewhere still, just in case. But it did, it did feel nice after, which is interesting. Whether it's some sort of weird, I don't know. You tell me. You're the witch. Not really. I study it. I don't really practice. I just tell you, just don't. Whatever you guys do, don't bind. The worst, I tell you, because we did a binding. We, I live in Arizona. This is getting really crazy, but I hope you enjoy this. I'm supposed to interview you, not the other way, but uh, in Sedona. Have you ever been to Sedona? No, I have not. So it's one of the most amazing places in the world. It's just does not make. I'm sure you've been there, Jason. No, but a, a lot of. Like my dad is constantly there. He's got a timeshare there, so I see all. The I pictures. can't believe you live so close. I know it's it's it's. Real, well, I mean, we have Red Rock here, which is kind of similar. Dude, it's but, different. It's it's like another world, right? And so it's very psychic. There's a lot of psychics there. There's a lot of like vortexes and all that type of stuff. And you could there's probably a bunch of covens there too. I don't know, <laughs> but it's very artsy, right? So what, there's this tree on top of this huge mountain, right? And it's a vortex, one of the multiple, like a, a place of power. You can feel energy. Ooh. It's just different, right? And uh, we took a little branch, right? And then, I don't know, we shouldn't have done that probably. But, and then we like took some pictures of us and all that. This is the my ex that passed away. And we bound, we loved each other very much, you know? So we did a binding like to each other, right? So when she passed, like, I tell you what, man, I, it's, I can't, it's still there. Like, it's like, it's like almost like a haunting. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. So what I would say is don't do bindings. <laughs> <laughs> no, no bindings. Uh, like yeah. I said earlier, you don't fuck with things you're not supposed to fuck with. If you don't know what's going on. That's why I'm just studying right now before I <laughs> practice <laughs> before practice before. Yeah. Before the sacrificial goat. No, go not in the church of Satan. <laughs> God, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, well, anyway. Story that one of my roommates is from Hawaii. Uh, his name is Pierre. He's probably not watching, but anyway, he told me there's this one highway or something that like, if you take rocks from that highway, you are screwed. It's like your luck will turn so bad 
that literally people will, will take like a rock from that area and they'll leave. And years later, they're bringing that rock back to, to put it oh, back. I saw so, something on that show. Yeah. And, and, and he said, that show. shit is true, dude. He's like, you do not mess with that. Because he said, you will, you will be going back to bring that rock. And if you screw it up and lose it or something and can't bring it back, um, you're done. You What's know, interesting is I saw a show so on, on that stuff. I saw a show on that. Yeah, uh, he said that absolutely, girls, man. Some girls took it and it was like super bad luck, and then yeah. they brought it back. And once they brought it back, it was cleared. But don't mess with rocks yeah. either, friend from Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, it's like learning about the Puerto Rican El Chupacabra. And are you uh, sure it's Puerto Rican? I thought it was Mexican. Uh, there it is, but there is a Puerto Rican version as well. Uh, but <laughs> same thing as a Puerto Rican version is an alien. Um, but that's a whole other can of worms. Um, hey, you said there's a Puerto Rican alien. It's like a. There's like several theories that think that it's a alien or a, a government experiments. But apparently, there is a Puerto Rican version of the El, Chico, uh, El Chupacabra. Yeah, I've seen pictures. I mean, well, where are we going with that? <laughs> Down the weird that? and creepy and the macabre. Macabre, as others would say. <laughs> I never say the macabre right. I, it, it's spelled macabre, right? Macabre. Macabre? Macabre. At least we're not talking about murder yet. <laughs> we're not there yet? No, we're out of time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to say again, thanks so much for coming. It was really nice getting to know you, Corinne, and I hope to meet you in the future and maybe we'll do another show. And thank you so much. And Jason, of course, you guys check out Corinne on her Instagram. Check out Jason Exchange Collectibles. Pick up her new cover. And uh, I wish you all the best. And oh, comment in the video because you can win. Now, oh, if they is there a giveaway for her? Oh, you know, we need to do something for. What can we do for that? Uh, let's do. Are you already doing a Chrome for it or no? No. So yeah, Loom doesn't do. They don't do the medals. So I tried, but they don't do that. So what can we give away? Why don't you do give away um, the next set or something? Yeah, let's do. Let's do. Uh, how about a set of both covers nine eight? Okay. Version. So you guys, whatever you get in regard to the pro. Uh, is it any Proctor cover or just hers? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it for, we'll do it for any of them. So that'll give them some more chances. If you guys get any of that, okay, of uh, the Proctor Valley Road stuff, hopefully get hers. Um, and then <laughs> you'll do a randomizer later, and someone will win a set of slabs of her cover. Yep, that's awesome. Okay. So those who waited didn't wait the whole time. You didn't know. <laughs> well, they don't know, but they're still entered anyway. So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna let everybody go. It's time for me to relax, and I hope you guys can relax too and have a good night. And that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, All right, you guys. Let me find the outro because I can't. <laughs> Let's, okay. Here we go. Here's a good one the so-called normal guys who always let you down. Sickos never scare me. At least they're committed. <laughs>